Hey, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So the studio is still not complete, but I don't want to delay the video any further. We at least have our countertops in, but I do have 10 budget IEMs that we've tested, budgets ranging from the $20 to $50 mark and the $100 mark all the way to the $200 mark. These are 10 very different IEMs. All of these provide different tonalities, different tunings to provide different experiences in game. And I definitely have my number one pick for my budget IEM, but I do want to get into what I feel is the best for each of those price brackets for a competitive gaming IEM. Let's get into it. We have a lot of IEMs that cover the ultra low budget range, which I would consider the $19 to $50 to $60 range. We have six IEMs on the table. We have the Sol Node Zero, the QKZ HBB, Truth Your Critical Zero, Sin T2 DLC, KZ ZS10 Pro X, and the KZ AS16 Pro. Plugging right into game, how do they sound for Valorant? How do they sound for Apex? I want to start with the 7 Hertz Sol Node Zero. For Valorant and TAC shooters, I think that the single dynamic driver here and the tuning being very well balanced. It lacks some sub bass, it lacks a lot of that punch compared to something like the QKZ HBB. But overall, it just feels a little bit too recessed in Valorant. You lack that emphasis of when things are occurring around you. The imaging, the soundstage, overall, not horrible. It's one of those mediocre gaming IEMs where it just lacks a little bit of micro detail lacks some very good separation and it's just a bit too recessed for those audio cues compared to a lot of other IEMs in the budget range but just overall an extremely good $20 pair of IEMs for music listening purposes and just general gaming. Moving to the QKZ HBB these are actually just $20 insanity for gaming purposes. If you're on an ultra low budget you can't spend more than $20. These are particularly good for both Valorant as well as Apex Legends. In Apex Legends, they have just this slight issue of when too many things are going on, you definitely lose a lot of that separation. You lose those audio cues kind of happening around you compared to something like the Truth or Critical Zero that we'll get into. But for Valorant, it's not necessarily as much of an issue because you kind of are sometimes, for the most part, separated away from your team, holding a different angle and listening to those audio cues as they pop up. Whereas in scenarios where, let's say, you're pushing a bombsite with your team, the other team is kind of stacking and a lot of things are going on, you can lose a little bit of that audio cue separation, but just the imaging, the depth perception, the verticality, everything is handled extremely well on the QKZ HBB, and it definitely gets a recommendation and a wall hack certification. Moving to the Truth or Critical Zero, I happen to think that these are a fantastic IEM for gaming-related purposes. These are going to be on the wall hack tier list, not just receive a wall hack certification, because these are at this price point of $50, very good for gaming related purposes. I think the imaging, the depth perception are just better than the QKZ HBB and everything else on the table in this price range. I think for Apex Legends in particular, when that boomy, bassy stuff is going on, like the QKZ HBB, the separation happens to be quite a bit, be bit better. You don't feel as flustered in game and that helps give you that emphasis and that reaction time you need for those audio cues to get your crosshair and to get primed for somebody coming at you um, before you know losing out the opportunity of getting out additional damage. I think for Valorant, they perform extremely well. Every game that I've used on the Truth or Critical Zero happens to just perform very well. They don't necessarily have the tuning that has that natural sounding bass, in my opinion. The mid bass feels a little bit off to me in its tonality. But overall, a dual dynamic driver, one handling the sub, I think helps render this mechanically good IEM for gaming related purposes and it will be on the wall hack certification tier list. And getting to the Tin T2 DLC, I think just the fact that these three IEMs have released kind of makes it a harder proposition, a harder sell. It definitely has a brighter sound signature in my opinion than these other three, maybe closer to the Sol Notes in its neutrality, uh, but again, brighter in-game and both for music listening purposes, making the neutrality of the cell notes sound a little bit better to me for vocals and for just upper harmonics. The 10T2 DLC in-game has a nice separation for left channel, right channel, but the imaging can feel a little bit 
blurry, a little bit mushy. The verticality is not quite as good as the Truthier or the QKZ HBB. And in terms of separation, when too many things are going on, it can get a little bit shouty and you definitely lose detail and micro detail on the Tin T2 DLC moving from the Truthier Critical Zero and the QKZ HBB. So not going to receive the Wallhack certification or get on the Wallhack tier list. Moving to the KZ ZS10 Pro X, I am not going to recommend this for gaming related purposes. I know it's received a lot of recommendations, but I think that they are a little misplaced. And I can definitely see why. In Valorant, when there's not a lot going on, they happen to sound quite good. You can pick up imaging and audio cues happening around you. But when there's too much going on, everything literally turns to mashed potatoes. And there's a lot of scenarios where that happens in Valorant, right? If you're pushing a bombsite with your team, you hear your friendly footsteps, you hear the opposing team's footsteps, you hear grenades going off, abilities, you're shooting, teammates are shooting, blah, 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 blah. Everything literally turns to mashed potatoes and you cannot hear where anything is coming from. And even the audio cues that should be very direct in front of you kind of just follow the mush and you can't make out where anything is occurring. That becomes 10 times worse in Apex Legends on those broad expansive maps when you're getting third party Gibraltar ults are going off. You just cannot hear where any audio cues are coming from. For that reason alone, even though they sound good, even though I enjoy them for music, then they're somewhat similar in tonality to the QKZ HBB. I do not recommend these for gaming related purposes. The KZAS 16 Pro, it has 16 balanced armatures in each side as advertised. I personally can't recommend these for gaming. They kind of remind me of the VR 3000 in the sense that they are just so metallic -y. They are so shrill. They are so just overemphasized on the highs and those upper harmonics just become a little bit distorted and a little bit too shrieky for me. I don't enjoy the tuning. I don't enjoy the tonality. I think they're okay when you can withstand how just overpowering and fatiguing the highs are for gaming related purposes. Um, but again, just not anywhere near the Truthier Critical Zero or the QKZ HBB. And just as a result of that tuning not being quite nearly as good as everything else on the table, even the KZ ZS10 Pro X, uh, which is a family member to the KZ A16 Pro, um, I would not recommend the A16 for gaming related purposes. Getting into the next price bracket, I've got four IEMs, including three planars, including the Dioko S12 Tengzu Zeshin Wu, and then one dynamic driver, which is the Simgot King Wonder, AKA the EN1000. Just getting into a little bit of the sound signatures, I think the um, three planars here all sound great, especially for their respective price brackets. I think the Dioko compared to the Tengzu Zeshin Wu is definitely more of a u-shaped the base i think is a little bit tighter a little bit faster feeling on the tengzu compared to the s12 and the dioko i think the sound stage the imaging is a little bit more holographic on the dioko compared to the tengzu and s12 i think the imaging is a little bit more accurate in terms of verticality and i would say depth perception on the dioko but it's not bad on the Tangzu Zeshin Wu. I think the Tangzu is probably my favorite in terms of tonality with those neutral mids and just a less shouty highs compared to the Dioko. And I think the Tangzu's got a more neutral balance and it's a little bit warmer uh, than the S12. The bass isn't as boosted or boomy. Um, the bass can really resonate on the S12, making this particular IEM like the Z12 have particular issues with separation in things like Apex as well as Valorant. I think that it has a pretty significant issue in that regard, making it a little difficult to hear all of the audio cues going on around you when too many things are happening. I also don't think that the imaging is quite as good as the Tangzu. For instance, when somebody is behind a wall, I am able to pick up that imaging with more precision on both the Dioko and the Tangzu. The Dioko, I think, handles verticality better than the Tangzu, but the Tangzu's imaging, particularly in Valorant, happens to be quite good. I think they both kind of suffer from issues with separation. The Dioko more so in Apex as a result of um, a lot of the kind of shoutier tonalities, R301s going off, R9 shooting, 
um, armors cracking, it becomes a little bit of an issue. But overall, the imaging happens to be quite good, and I would probably put it second behind the Raptgo Hook X. The Tengzu Zeshin Wu is so good in its tonality and its base. It is one of the best planners that I personally listen to. I can't recommend it enough in terms of a music and in, in entertainment listening experience. And for gaming, I don't find them to be bad. I think for Valorant, these are passable. The imaging happens to be quite good. The only issue I had with these was a little bit of that verticality wasn't quite as clear as the Dioko and separation when too many things are going on in terms of that basey region. Um, the separation can be a little bit muddled, kind of like the QKZ HBB, but quite good in Valorant. Definitely could see a recommendation being made um, in terms of a wall hack tier for Valorant, but Apex, um, the imaging is just not nearly as good as the Dioko and other things on the list, including the Truthier Critical Zero. Um, so I can't put it on the wallhack tier list because it's not good for all use case scenarios. Um, even though it's quite good for Valorant, minus those few scenarios, it's just not going to get the recommendation. The S12 is not going to get a recommendation, again, because the imaging behind walls and just the pinpoint precision of that depth perception isn't there. Verticality isn't there just as the Z12. If you guys want to see a more in-depth video, you can look at my review, including the Z12, um, but definitely not going to get a recommendation despite how much I enjoy them for music. The Dioko is that shoutiness uh, in the upper region, the treble. It's a little bit too much and a little bit too overwhelming. And for Valorant in particular, it's actually a little bit recessed. So you feel a little bit further away from the sound, making it less precise than even the Tangzu, which again, still has its own issues. So in Apex, again, you have a big separation issue. The verticality, the depth perception, the pinpoint precision isn't quite there, even though it's very good. Um, so definitely passable for Valorant and Apex with the Dioko, just not fully there to be able to recommend it and put it on a wall hack tier list. And that takes us to the only dynamic driver in this segment of the video, the King Wonder. I think the faceplate, the build looks pretty stunning. It is definitely a very comfortable IEM. The build quality is great. The only thing I don't like is the cable that comes included uh, with this plug system that does change the audio with each of the three included plugs. I personally think that they sound the best with just a third party cable. I used the Alti while testing this primarily. And I do think that these are a very compelling purchase for Valorant and tax shooters. They're very clean. The audio, the imaging is very clear. The depth perception is definitely there and very accurate. When somebody's behind a wall, you don't really have an issue knowing exactly where they are behind the wall. The only issue I had with the King Wonder was when it came to Apex. When you have a lot of people in front of you and behind you, let's say you're fighting a team in front of you, you have a team third partying behind you, or you have in a scenario even against just one team where you have, let's say, somebody above you, uh, somebody in front of you, somebody behind you, the separation kind of becomes a little bit muddled. It kind of loses itself. And I think that the imaging is a little bit more impactful when you're hearing things kind of not in front of you and behind you. Um, the imaging, the soundstage are pretty damn good for gaming related purposes. You don't feel like the audio is too recessed. It's very present. You get that emphasis for tax shooters. So I would definitely give it the recommendation for Valorant. But because of those kind of mashed potato effect when too many things are happening in front of you and behind you for Apex, I certainly do not recommend them for broad expansive maps or um, presumably games where too many things are going to be going on in front of you and behind you. It doesn't really happen a lot in tax shooters, um, but it is just um, something that really does happen a lot in Apex Legends. I think for music listening purposes, they are probably one of the best sounding dynamic driver IEMs in this video in particular. I think that the bass and sub bass on this particular IEM is surface level. You don't really get a huge impact. It has a presence, but not a very big impact in terms of the sub bass and mid bass. Uh, mid bass sounds a little bit off. It's a brighter sounding IEM and male vocals as a result actually do sound a little bit less masculine, a little bit less natural. 
Um, and the highs, again, it's it's a little bit of a brighter IEM, but not something like a Dioko where things became too shouty. It's actually a pretty well-balanced, what sounded to me more V-shaped IEM. I actually really did enjoy it, and I think it is a great set for music listening purposes. Um, in its price point, where it's typically on sale around $150, and something that performs okay in Apex, and something that performs great for Valorant. So not going to get a Wallhack certification because it doesn't really cross over to both games, um, but definitely something that deserves the recommendation for Valorant in particular. So that is it for this video, guys. I think the QKZ HBB is definitely my recommendation from the zero to $20 mark. The Truthier Critical Zero is going to be my recommendation if you can go up to the $50 mark. And out of all of the IEMs in this video that went up to around $200, I would still recommend the Truthier Critical Zero, and it's going to be the only IEM that will be joining the Wallhack certification tier list. I just need to figure out where I want to place them, but I will leave you guys with one word of advice, and that is if you are somebody who cares about having not only good, perfect directional audio for gaming-related purposes for competitive gaming, but you also want a really nice-sounding IEM, is it worth going up in price to something like a Dunu Vulcan or the Rapco Hook X? I absolutely think it is worth it. And I think both of those IEMs that are my number one and number two in my certification tier list are better than the Truthier Critical Zero as well from a mechanical and technical standpoint for gaming-related purposes. But for $50, the Truthier Critical Zero gets pretty damn close at a competitive level. It's a very compelling purchase. And I think you guys, for competitive gaming purposes, especially if you cross over to multiple titles, are going to be very happy at $50 with the Truth or Critical Zero. I hope that helped, guys. If it did, please leave a sub to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.